Hello and welcome to the Spoke Unit. My name's Paul Anthony. And I'm CP. And today we're going to be reviewing the best hygrometers. Whether you're using them for food storage, instrument storage, or how has we're going to be using them with cigars, this is a video you must watch. So Paul, tell me, why are all these in bags? Well, the most important thing you can do when you actually are reviewing and buying a hygrometer is having the ability to calibrate it so you know you're actually using a hygrometer that is giving you an accurate enough reading from this calibration. Here at Bespoke Unit, we actually like to use the Bavida calibration kit. They're affordable, uh, they're very accurate. They use a 75% RH, uh, mixture here and it's accurate to 0.3% uh, RH. So we have a video link up here and in the description below on actually how to use this. Uh, we have purposefully, purposefully selected hygrometers here that you can calibrate once uh, you've used the test. So we've not included several that we own that are non-calibratable because mm. this is such an important thing to stress that if you're working off a non-calibrated uh, hygrometer you're basically flying blind and you may as well not use one so that's why for dramatic effect and to really bang it home mm. um, I know when we've talked to Rob over at Bavida this is one of the uh, biggest pain points that they have in discussing how uh, Bavida works for example with their two-way humidification that for example their 69 um, RH packs will give off plus minus one percent of RH and someone's you know, uh, airtight container is reading 75 or 60 and you know, it's most likely if it is a truly an airtight container, uh, it's most likely going to be an uncalibrated uh, hygrometer mm. because the science of Bavida is kind of a universal truth, um, especially with the new packs um, as where the hygrometer, if it's just thrown in there, you just trust it blindly. Um, you're, you're really doing yourself a disservice. So again, stressing the importance of calibratable hygrometers um, is kind of the number one thing that we wanted to have during this test and our discussion of mm. hygrometers. Um, I've kind of gone down this road a little bit further than you have. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I've actually still got one of these and I've got exactly one of these that Paul gave me. So we'll be talking about that a little bit later in this video. Sure. So what we've kind of done here is separated the table between mm. kind of, okay, analog, which is kind of your most basic that you're going to get with most even cheap humidors mm. um, through to kind of just digital ones. Then we have these kind of smart hygrometers um, that attach to apps on your phone so you can either track them remotely or when you're close to the device via Bluetooth. I mean, I guess we should start with the most primitive and the most basic when taking a look at this. Yeah, so I mean, we uh, have left these packs in here for three days now, which is the uh, recommended amount of time that Sensor Push, uh, this hygrometer here, recommends to fully calibrate um, the sensor. Um, the others are about one day, so we wanted to give it the full three days that Sensor Push mm. had requested. But as you can uh, potentially see here in the uh, in the second camera, um, we're actually reading around 64%. So this hygrometer is 11% RH mm. off out mm. of the box, you know, which isn't um, ideal to say the least. It's it's not uncommon with especially analog hygrometers, uh, but they are renowned for being completely inaccurate, whether they've been calibrated or not. And they uncalibrate very quickly, even after being calibrated in the first place. They're very easy to set. You just have to put a screwdriver in the back and twist the dial until it's reading the right RH as is in the bag. But you'll be having to do this every couple of months. The only upside I'd say, apart from that, very cheap, is that you have a nice analog dial which is quite attractive. Yeah. Most desktop humidors come with one. They're normally in set in the front. It's a nice display piece. As for functionality, it's not really there. I mean, mm. I was in, kind of in that mode myself at one point, and I, obviously the massive downside is that if I'm reading that, unaware that this is an uncalibrated device, and I'm reading, uh, you know, 64 when it's supposed to be 75, so we're 11 uh, percent off. Uh, if I'm trying to force up my uh, humidor mm. up 11 percent, I'm going to have some 
serious issues with those cigars. We're going to have mm -hmm. blowouts of the wrappers. We're going to potentially have mold. Mm -hmm. We're potentially going to have an over humidification of the actual humidor itself. A uh, link uh, above and below on how to actually season your uh, humidor correctly to avoid those kind of issues. Mm. Um, so again, like, or conversely, if it was reading 11 too much, I could be trying to like suck that RH down, drying the cigars out. I mean, again, like massive burn issues with that. So oh, yeah. again, this, we're gonna like keep boring you with this calibration issue, but uh, it really I, is I extremely confess, important. At first, when Paul started talking about this, I was falling asleep. I was thinking, this, what, what is he, what is he talking about? I was just like, just get a digital hygrometer, get your analog, throw them in there, throw a couple of Bevita packs or some gel. Hope for the best, it'll be fine. But the more I hear about this, the more he's really won me over. And after talking with uh, Robert Bevita as well, who's been an absolute star and very patient, yeah. answering all our questions. He's also got a podcast, which is uh, Box Press, as I recall. That's correct, yeah. Which is fantastic. I've been converted, and I understand now the importance, considering how much we invest in our cigars, the importance in a quality hygrometer. Indeed, and the purpose of this video is not to one bore you, but mm. by the end of it, basically give you the toolkit to go out, no matter your budget, no matter your uh, propensity towards like scientific tinkering, mm. um, you're gonna be able to just be able to you know, buy whichever hygrometer you'd like, put it in a um, a calibration kit. Mm. Um, again, we do not recommend the salt method if you've ever heard of that. That is a big no-no. Uh, Rob over at Bovida said they've done tests in their uh, highly quality controlled lab mm. and they've seen uh, results of plus minus 10% RH with that particular test. So uh, if, again, check out that link of why the 75% packs are very very accurate and this is the kind of stuff you want to use and if you have a larger hygrometer like the six or one here i just put in a kind of small bovida uh, humidor bag um, or you can put it in an airtight container and still achieve the same results if your hygrometer will not fit in the provided uh, calibration kit itself so uh you know as we kind of go down the line here we have some of these uh, digital um uh kind of hygrometers and these are in the the sort of twenty dollar range, I'd yeah. say. So, uh, okay, now out out of the box. I mean, I've calibrated all of these before, and we've we've got about a one percent deviation on this. This is reading seventy six. This one's reading seventy seven, and this one is reading uh, seventy two. So, you know, I haven't calibrated these for about six months. I think that's an important point that yeah. you actually. Once you've won and done, you actually have to keep calibrating these. Yeah, you just need to make sure, check everything. It's like making sure everything's in check. Uh, if you have a car with a carburetor, you're going to tune that quite often. Or if, you have, if you're uh, a musician, you've got a guitar, you're going to retune that as well. Calibrations are just the same with hygrometers. Correct. And the, uh, the time it takes when you may be re-seasoning your uh, humidor, again, check the link we referenced earlier, where you may have to do it once a year or when there's big seasonal changes in RH. So mm. right now my house is probably, uh, what are we looking at? Mid 20s, high 20s percent RH because we're just coming out of the winter here in the Northeast USA. Mm. And then in the summer, I'm probably gonna be pushing 60% RH. So if you've got a wooden humidor, for example, you're gonna be, you know, those seals are gonna be taking in and out moisture, mm. um, depending on the, the like kind of outside RH, um, which when you recalibrate or re-season, um, the humidor is another time when you maybe want to recalibrate and kind of uh, the hygrometer itself. Mm, so, good. you know, but these are actually pretty good for the price point. Uh, obviously, they lack the functionality of being connected to your smartphone. Uh, they probably have an inherent, um, you know, plus minus three percent accuracy, um, as you can see, which is effectively what we've kind of found here when we're looking to recalibrate them. If you want the most basic setup it's kind of obligatory to at least have one of these uh, this is the one uh, i use and i've been using for about a year now and the results are very good very reasonable and what you'd expect from a budget hygrometer but i would not expect or uh, be satisfied with anything less than this but can we have more paul indeed we can sean Flew. <laughs> so <laughs> we are in the technology age here exactly and uh the nice thing about these uh hygrometers is is that you can use uh one of these things so each one of these the sensor push the bovida and the six or all have uh, associated apps that you can track them on the phone with so we actually have a comparative review of all three of these where we kind of geek out on mm. the different functionality the different plus minus tolerances 
and all that stuff link above and in the description below as well as individual reviews on sensor push for vita and six mm -hmm. so but with that being said i mean all of these here do have their plus or minuses as well so mm -hmm. um you know that oh, i don't think we've found a perfect solution um i don't but, think there ever could be a perfect solution no especially not at these price mm -hmm. points i mean we're looking at like fifty dollars fifty dollars and 200 swiss francs so it's just over uh, 200 dollars mm. but i mean this thing's a piece you know yeah. um it's uh you know with regards to the kind of apps that they're using um you know they're all fairly similar in functionality i do not believe but please comment below um if i'm incorrect that you cannot calibrate this yourself because it comes out of the factory pre-calibrated at plus minus two percent and as I sit here right now, after three days in the calibration kit, I can check that this is reading 75.8% uh, RH. It's only 0.8% off um, the RH level, which is pretty accurate. Uh, if we look at the, uh, the sensor push ones, I'm actually testing another sensor in another calibration kit uh, in the other room. But we are on this uh, green dot um, one that I've put here. We're actually reading 74.8%. So we're only 0.2% RH off. However, sensor push does mention that out of the box, they are typically uh, kind of four to three percent RH off, and um, you are able to calibrate these, uh, which is nice within the uh, the app itself. And then we go to Bavida, which probably represents the best value for money mm. in the uh, smart sensor arena because it's also fifty dollars, but it comes with the calibration kit, as where these two do not come with the calibration kit as with these other ones you can uh, buy this calibration kit from uh, Bavida itself but when you buy the sensor at $50 you do get the calibration kit and you also get four Bavida packs at the RH of your choosing so mm. that's also about another 16 bucks so this is probably um, the best however the main downside with this is is that it's only uh, Bluetooth enabled. So it has, a, I think it's Bluetooth 2, I'm not sure the exact technology oh, okay. uh, used. Uh, so it's about a hundred foot range uh, to your cell phone, um, but it does not have a, a Wi-Fi gateway, which is an optional extra with the sensor push. And it uh, with the uh, Sigsaw, it comes kind of Wi-Fi enabled, but it doesn't have Bluetooth. So if you didn't have a Wi-Fi network, um, I know just say you've got one of these at the golf course, or at your club or out of the boathouse, whatever it may be, um, that may be a problem for the Sigsaw. But with the Bavita, they do have the option to connect it to a kind of idle um, device, such as an old iPhone or uh, some sort of tablet that you can always run in the background, picking up this Bluetooth signal that will then patch to Wi-Fi mm. to go through. I haven't tested it. There's actually a link below from Bavita themselves that shows you how to do that. Um, we talk about kind of the calibration we're actually running the 75 percent calibration in this kit and we are in a second point calibration on this kit of the 32 percent which gets the accuracy from out of the box reading my notes here at four percent mm. uh plus minus rh with a one point calibration it's 2.5 percent rh and if you just spend the extra 24 hours you can get the accuracy down to 1.5 percent which is actually the most accurate um, of the sensors um, just because we don't have the ability to calibrate that ourselves which for some people you know you don't even have to do this calibration kit because they're doing it for you mm. um, but for us in our testing uh, we kind of found it was necessary so if I just uh, quickly uh, see where we're reading on this so this one we are reading 37% right now so when the 24 hours has elapsed that's going to recalibrate itself and this one's reading slightly higher at 76 so we just need to set that one as well so they're mm. about one percent off and two percent off but we're going to be able to set them at the end of their calibration times to kind of lock that in at 75 and uh, 32 and then we can introduce them back into our humidors mm. personally uh, out of all these i'm really into having a connected home i've got uh, for example a wireless thermostat i've got uh, well, remote controlled uh, shutters things like that at home uh, so I would like to get myself one of these and I'm probably going to go for the Bavida. Uh, I'm going to get a couple, not just for one of my cigars, I'm going to put one in my desktop humidor, but because I'm really into champagne, uh, as you may or may not be aware of, as well as wines, I'm going to be using them for storing my wine and champagne in my cellar to be able to check the humidity and the temperature in those rooms as well. 
So it goes to show really that hygrometers, they have a wide variety of uses that can be used for a number of different uh, passions or projects that you may have. Correct. So, I mean, I mean, the one takeaway is, or the two takeaways would be is one, you need to calibrate and two, mm. calibration isn't going to be 100% accurate all times i mean mm. we're not in a we're talking about 50 dollars devices here we're not talking about you know a hundred thousand dollar labs here mm. with ultra sensitive um you know precision tools but for the money i don't think you can go wrong i mean if we're going to give a high level recap you know keep the analog one if you just like the look of it but basically don't rely on it if you're looking for a bare minimum entry level system or in a scenario where you can you know, kind of just storm, but, um, you know, and, and it's not overly important to you or it's just a short term solution, then you can pick up one of these $20 ones that are are kind of calibratable because a lot of the digital ones aren't. Links below where you can buy these. And then really, uh, you should definitely check out the video where we compare these side by side, mm. um, link above and below um, of that review and where to buy these individually. So um, again, there are a lot of good options out there depending on your use case and scenarios. Mm. Some of these may be better than others, but um, again, I do uh, second uh, Charles Philippe's opinion that this, the Bavida one, mm. probably offers the most bang for the buck um, because mm. it comes you know, with uh, a basic calibration kit. It comes with a couple of Bavida packs that you can already use, uh, in our case, for cigars. And um, that's about that, really. So. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, please comment below if you know any other smart uh, hygrometers um, that we may be able to test or that you've had success with or any other uh, calibration methods that you also may recommend in the uh, comment section below. Like the video if you did so. Also check out that uh, description section because there are many links that can uh, assist you in your cigar or humidification stroke calibration journey. And please smash that subscribe button. I'm Paul Anthony. I'm CP. And see you later. Take care.